motivates people or that makes you move forward. It's not because you know how to do it, it's not because you have the talent, it's not because you have the ability, but it's because there's a God factor in it. God is behind it, it's by divine providence. I think that's just what helped me. Because there were lots of challenges, there were lots of conflict, let me say conflicts, there were lots of quarrels, yeah, quarrels and a lot of things like that with my housemates. So, considering all that, I don't think I will have one, but it was because God was with me. And that doesn't mean God is not, um, God was not with the other housemates, but there's always a set time for everything, so I won't just say it's my time that I came that time. The season two of the Reach to Lead reality TV show was like a clear contest between River State and the State of Osho. The port of call after all the preliminaries of the selection exercise, where thousands of senior secondary school two students took part, followed by the oral and written drills for the sizable number, was Neander International School Ekbe, where 15 housemates came to the Reach to Lead house. They came, and as they entered, it was glaringly demonstrated they were prepared for the task ahead. The series of activities which included contests in cerebral activities like public speaking, writing skills, and of course, reading skills. Also arts and crafts, use of library. The housemates visited the University of Ibaki Library, where they were a sort of initiated by the university librarian. This is the Read to Lead Africa season two, right here in the city of Ibadan, the Oya State capital, and we're right here in the Premier University to visit the school library. All right, it's the University of Universities. You are University of Ibadan. And of course, we're here with the housemates. We're going right to the library for the library task. They have to learn, first of all, the use of the library. On behalf of the management and staff, and also our students of Kenneth DK Library of University of Nevada, I welcome you to this library. DS407, this number we use, this is the exact location of the book on the shelf. So when you get there, if you say DS, we know where the shelf DS is. And we look for this book in 407. We all know Pella and Nicola Puch. Yes. The yes. Yes. The you know the mother of an activist. Yes. yes. Okay, these are some of our letters because some of our documents is that private diary was donated to the library. Right. So if you really want to study women activism, Pella's mom. Yes. So so show us some of the like some of the letters she wrote to the son and the son Pella that is my darling mommy, blah blah blah. There were fitness exercises and swimming too. Some of the housemates were doing this for the very first time in their lives. There were other games and sports. Quiz and debates, and trips to places like the Makmu Hall in Bado, Ekwe Fish Market.
Okay, so they dress the fish even when they're not dead. This particular fish isn't dead. Oh, they just killed it. Ouch. I'm sorry. Okay, so you be tell your man passing here. I'm the palace of Oloja of Ekwe. It was history the law, and one could say memories are made of this. Ekwe is a traditional heritage town. At the end of the day, they captured Akala Jolu. And it was buried in where we call Oju Alaro. Oju Alaro Shrine. That Oju Alaro Shrine is two. One is very close to the lagoon at the water side, and one is, is up at the back of Central Mosque. It was fun all the way, and we need to remember there is time for everything. And seasons too. A time to sleep, a time to wake, a time to sow, a time to read, a time to be happy, and a time to be sad. T-Y-L-B-N-N-Y. That is correct. <laughs> E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R. -E -E Very correct. Thank you. The best thing to do is, is to woo up through a person, an intermediary called the Alarino. But in 2009, when the Nigerian government had to launch an investigation, into the activities of the group, following a report that said that the members of the group were arming themselves. On the 30th of May, 1967, late Colonel Odumegu Dan Ojuku went on air to declare Biafra as a republic. This led to this led to protracted and a bloody civil war. Impromptu speech contest. My name is Devina Iko, and I thank everyone for the privilege for me to stand here to talk on my dream. My dream is to become an accountant in future. My dream is to help those who are underprivileged. Firstly, democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and from the people, which is defined by Abraham Lincoln. Part of the money will be used to buy textbook and all that, so as to come out in flying colors in the course I want to study, because readers are leaders and leaders are achievers. Investments. This actually comes next because within the space of two to three months, I would have come up with, come up with an exciting business idea. One fascinating sector I would invest in is the agricultural sector. the prophet. Dash was the priest of Bethel. 
surface is competition. Only two can break the barrier and cross to the grand finale. English vowel sound. Monotongs. Right, correct. What type of clause is the underlined expression in the sentence read? Non clause. Correct. One. Wrong. Twenty-seven. Hmm? Twenty-seven. Wrong. From the fourth position, we to them queen. Queen, don't cry. You have you have a grand prize. You get to take me home free of charge. <laughs> I want to say thank you to, to God for making me to. Queen could not withstand the firepower of the males. She wished she had made it to the final. According to William Shakespeare, all is well that ends well. After the glamorous entertaining, glorious academic days of various activities, the winner finally emerged. Ladies and gentlemen, scoring a total of 71.5%, the winner is... The winner is Adegoke Simeon. We to we to lead Africa started when my principal called us that we that the we to lead Africa initiative is bringing a competition to a school that we all sh should all be prepared for the exam. On the fateful day, on the day of the examination, I went to the examination hall with all prepared. I went to the examination hall prepared. I did my best. And then a few days later, uh, the list was sent to the school that some of our students qualified. And then we went for the second stage at the Ministry of Education. And at the Ministry of Education, we met, I met with elder students from every other school in Ocean State, where we did uh, another stage exam. And the exam involved uh, the maths and English. And this time it was involving the OA our test, which was due to us within a few minutes. And at the end of the exam, immediately that same day, we got the result. And then I was chosen to be among the seven that was from our state to be at the v to leaders. And then I was able to participate in the v to leaders 2013. At the v to leaders, we also had counterparts from uh, we were state, they were nine in number. And then when we arrived, we went for excursion uh, during the first week. We went for leadership, we went for trainings that helped us, they teach, they taught us how to do some things. And then uh, after that week, we started the competition and in full, I'm now a new being. Uh, it lead Africa has changed me from the Similulua I was before I went to the way to lead Africa to another new Similulua I am now. Now I can speak in front I can speak in front of clouds. When we're given a topic, I don't need to be uh, to be fearful again about the topic. Just need to approach it, approach it with the basic tools that we taught. And I think that so that by doing so, God will help me. The person I will not forget in the video leaders is if I miracle who playing the third position. Uh, if I miracle is a boy that is very interesting. He, he cracks jokes that is very funny. Then we used to sing uh, 
uh, to the Isang Gun Song, Gun Putakot Song, to the River State uh, guests that came around. It was about the school. So we formed the song. We usually play, we usually play together, we sing the song in a more funny way. It was lively. And then I will know, I will also know Miss uh, one to Dam Queen is from uh, Mude, the girl secondary school, PhD, uh, Petakot. She is also uh, a, funny, uh, a funny colleague. Uh, she, every time we talking, she always puts humor. And when someone needs, uh, and when someone needs, someone, someone, when I need uh, someone to jam me up, most of the time when I write something, uh, she's the one I will show, that will tell me uh, maybe it is nice. And then if you write some, uh, some formed story, we just make the rest of ourselves. In the week to leaders also, we also had uh, this guy that was, uh, every time he's always hugging. There came a time in the house that this guy, <laughs> it was very funny, he said uh, there is no God. Everybody was just saying, ah, there's no God. Uh, I don't know why he said that, but <laughs> it was very funny. He was still arguing that the physics did not prove it. But everybody was saying maybe because uh, he didn't qualify for the next round. You don't know, but he just, he just kept saying uh, uh, there was no good and he was arguing a lot and then you have another guy that is so troublesome everything you're doing <laughs> he comes there and split it up he will say he's playing with you you don't have you don't don't do anything to him or her and uh, that, that guy name is uh, cousin when he comes he just comes now about manner he disorganizes maybe you're talking he just jumps in and then he disorganizes and the person I say Yagi is most, I, I forgot to mention the name. The name is uh, Marcos. He's from Potakoto, so <laughs> he argued that there is no God. And also to that, um, the, uh, the incident that I will not forget when uh, we also, we were playing, uh, we were playing with, uh, we were playing with uh, the girls from Potakot when, uh, they mistakenly, they took the information for another minute. It took a few days for them to reconcile, and then we went back to our friendship position. Uh, every one of the members in the V2 leaders, they were all interesting because me, uh, I, and my, my friend Ayo and I, that we shared the same room. We, were, uh, we allowed everybody into a room. So, in the whole, uh, in the whole uh, competition, we had to, we knew everyone, and then everyone was interesting. Everyone, the pattern of approach. Also, you have this boy. Also, uh, I've got to mention the name. The name is uh, Kevin Prince. He also Kevin Prince and Siri. They are two friends that come. They just come anytime. Just come. They start singing nonsense. <laughs> Well, we start laughing because they start saying, another time they just start making a film. They start saying film that is not real. But <laughs> well, you'll be laughing. It's good to be with those guys. They are really interesting. I, I miss them a lot. I miss them a lot. Teenage Cerebral, an entertaining reality TV show, is back with season three, The Margins of Stars. 
For 30 days, 19 housemates of the Reach to Lead House share battle for the grand prize of 2 million naira in scholarship and other fantastic prizes. The contests include Weird Sorrigman, Spell It, Public Speaking, Declamation Contest, Mambo and Jumbo, Fastest and Best, Critical Reasoning, Mastermind Series, The Great Debate and lots more, plus sports, parties, music, drama and plenty of laughter. Join daily on these channels. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can also watch episodes on our YouTube channel. Visit www.retoleadafrica.tv or call 0802-315-7972 or 0818-331-9200. Produced by Reading Awareness Society for Development in Africa, RASDA. Reach to Lead Africa Season 3. The margins of stars. Don't miss a moment. Slatoga's uh, project, to me, is a little project that has just started. If you maintain the tempo and continue this journey, it's most likely to go into an oak. It's something that has a lot of potential to impact on the society. And I'm happy you have students even beyond the Yoruba speaking area, bringing them in from rivers. Yes. So I commend that initiative. Well, it's a mixture of both. And why do I say mixture of both? On the internet, you are exposed to all kind of literature. Some of this literature, their credibility, you, we don't know. Some, yes, we may know the source. But then, that's where the librarian comes in to provide a guide to assist the student so that we, at least whatever students are reading will be something that we know that they should be able to benefit from. Because on the internet, you have all kind of postings, people posting whatever they, some junk, some without intellectual uh, backup. So we need to guide the children. But more importantly, the internet is also a blessing because with internet you can share information among students. And one important advantage of internet is that if you have a book and you have two, three students queuing up to read that book, it's only one person that can read that book at a certain point in time. But with the internet, the four, five students can read the same book simultaneously without even being aware of each other's. Uh, uh, present. That is the beauty of technology. The major challenge to my mind is that we are in a difficult situation whereby we've lost our values. The value for hard work is gone. Because what we are told in our own days was that for you to become somebody, you must read. And that's why there's this Yoruba song. But today, they tell you, look, children are on the first lane. They want to make much money than their parents. But even the parents, we parents are not helping. Because we give the wrong signal to our children that there are shortcuts. And to me, there is no shortcut to success. If you want shortcut, you must be ready to go to prison. I'm the president and founder of an NGO, Reading Awareness Society for Development in Africa, an NGO that is poised at uh, promoting reading culture, a sustainable reading culture among youth in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. The vision came about when God actually showed me what lies ahead of our youth in Nigeria, their present state, and what lies ahead of them. Because we discovered that by the in level of the pass rate of Waek and Jamb and Neko, in 2006, it was to, to about 15% or 10% that passed Waek and Neko, which invariably means these are the ones that are capable of going for higher education, for further education in 
tertiary institutions like the Polytechnic, the Colleges of Education and the University because the Nigerian education system stipulates that anyone that will go further, that will go for higher education must have five credits pass, including mathematics and English. But we discover that these students are just failing in mass. And God said, unless they go back and do what, what is right, they cannot lead the nation. Everyone that is presently in the hands of affairs, managers of economy, they will soon retire. And these students are the ones to take over from them. If they are to take over, they must be prepared. Are they not prepared for the challenges ahead? No because if they refuse to read, it's only education that can, that can make them to lead. It's only reading that can make them to lead. So, and that is the essence of our going to the nooks and crannies of Nigeria to let them know how important they are to the nation, how important they are to themselves also, because you cannot be, become anything if you refuse to read. So the essence and the vision of our NGO is to make them know that they need to go back to the basics and read to lead. And we started well. We started in 2000. We actually launched the program in January 2007. And uh, Emeritus Professor Ayobanjo was on hand. He was the chief launcher or the, the chairman of the occasion that day. And since that day, we were going from one senatorial district, one local government, one school to the other, preaching the gospel of freedom. And we, we had this reading clinic. There is a building that we donated for the reading clinic, which serves as a library. And there is a reading teacher there that teaches the students to read. Our NGO donated it. We did a lot of programs, seminars, workshops, even in tertiary institutions where the Polytechnic Ibadan, and where we were at Obafemi Awolo University. We were going from one place to the other to preach reading culture. But in 2011, we had another version. God said if we are to go from one state to another, in the 36 state of Nigeria, we may get weary along the line because we can't appear in two places at the same time. But God gave us the insight to go on the TV to make it mass media so that millions of people will have the opportunity to hear what we are saying at the same time. So that's the essence of why the Read to Lead Africa reality TV show. And apart from that, we wanted to have motivation to encouraging these students to go and read. The motivation is, let's give them a price tag, and this will spur them to want to imbibe the reading culture. So we decided to give them two million naira scholarship prize. Initially, at the, in season one, it was $30,000, because we feel they, they, they are free to go to any university in the world, I mean, f and under our scholarship. But unfortunately, because there is no sponsor yet, and we know year by year when we continue the program, we will be incurring more debt in wanting to help the people. So we decided to bring it down to two million naira scholarship in season two. The student that won the season one is um, Toby Ojenike from Ogu State. She attended the Federal Polytechnic Staff School, Ilaro. She was the winner of season one in 2012 which was held at Olasho International School in Loko Ijesha. And about um, 17 participants participated in the season one. In season two, Simis Lolu Adegoke from Atal Jasu of Science won season two out of about uh, 15 students that participated in, in season two. In season two, it was a contest between students of Oshun State and River State. And all in all, all 15 students participated. And Oshun State was lucky enough to have the first and second. And the third person came from River State. And this is season three now. We are on season three now. 
and the season three is in Akure, Ondo State. Students all over Ondo State, and they, they, they originated from all, most of the states in the east and west of Nigeria. They are in the camp now at Bekipaka College, Akure, and they are the ones that are in-house. About 19 of them are, are housemates now for season three. And the vision for us is to make them to inspire others that are watching them through various contests to inspire because they are mainly from public schools. They are not from private schools and they are like the sheep without shepherd. We are bringing them from obscurity to limelight. Those that watches the program, we see that there is a documentary that is going to go on whereby we go to the houses of these students and you will see how humble they are. Some of them came from what I would say, very poor homes. Yet, they are very brilliant students. And that's the essence of the theme of this year that we name it Emergence of Stars. Because stars are coming from where it is least expected. And as the Bible says, God is no respecter of person. If these students can come from all these villages, from even uncelebrated parents, it shows that every youth, every student in Nigeria has a hope if you sit with your books. So we, we are trying to preach that before a nation can develop, they must read. They must be highly informed. And you cannot be informed without opening a book. So we are preaching that apart from these students, these students are just examples to millions of students in Nigeria and millions of youths in Africa. Let everybody do the right thing to get to the right place. Developed nations are developed not by luck or by whatever. It is because they do the right thing at the right time. If African children also can do and emulate them, we will see that they will get to their desired destiny and they will be able to rule the nations and rule Africa as a whole. Let's take, for example, the Asian countries like, I mean, the Malaysia, Singapore, Korea, and so on, and China. Now they are, they are marching on, you know, with the developed nations. Why? Because they do what the developed nations are doing, and they are getting the same result the developed nations are getting. But we Africans, we are still being addressed as underdeveloped and developing, because we, 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 are, we are okay with what we are called. We are not ready to take up the steps that will take us to the top. And except we open the book, except we go back to books, we cannot develop because there's no shortcut to success, I always say it. So this program, as we are unfolding the season three now, you will discover that even if these students can come out of obscurity to limelight through reading, because you will see most of them, they show us they are reading corners, even in places where there, there is no nepa there is no light, you will see that nothing is an excuse for anybody to read and, and lead. About 10,000 students started this season. They did the first participant selection examination in several thousands of schools in Ondo State here. Those that scored 60% and above came and did the second leg, which is the second exams. That one is oral and written inclusive. And out of this 176 that came out of the 10,000, now we have 19 students in the Read to Lead house. And it shows that these 20 or 19 students are stars already. There is, anybody can win, we know, but they are all stars. That's why we call, call them emergence of stars.